Welcome back. Just in case you missed it, the last video was basically kind of like my devlog zero, where I introduced my game, how it all began, my switch from Unity, and the progress I've made so far recreating it in Godot. So since that last video, it's been a really long month outside of my dev work. I finally got my house prepped to sell and got it under contract. Took a weekend trip to go camping and mountain biking down in northwest Arkansas with my brother, where I finally did some big drops that I've had my eye on for a while. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, the Bentonville area is kind of like Disneyland for mountain bikers. It's pretty awesome. And right now, I'm actually currently in Louisiana spending Thanksgiving with my fiance's family. So anyway, a lot going on. But despite all of that, I've kept at it and it's been a super productive month working on the game, which by the way, might finally have a name now, but we'll get to that later near the end of the video. Over the past month or so, my main objective has been to finally add levels and playability to the Godot version of the game and get it closer to where it was in Unity. So to briefly repeat some of my previous devlog, the game has the two main level types, the standard flyover levels that make up the bulk of the gameplay, and platformer levels, where the pilot gets out to collect more fuel for the plane at the end of each set of levels. So I've been taking the testing framework for those two level types and recreating the first batch of levels exactly how I had them in Unity. Building new levels is actually pretty quick and really fun, but recreating my levels from Unity is much more tedious because it involves actually having to count out all the tiles in Unity, then place them in the same spot in Godot so that the levels are exactly the same. So definitely a lot of busy work, but when I was done, the game finally had some playable progression in Godot for the first time. And here's what that looked like. And just for reference, here's one level in Unity versus the same in Godot. It's pretty close. As I mentioned before, each new world comes with a new weapon for the player to use. And so the first set will have only Molotovs available until the next weapon is collected on foot upon the first fuel stop. At least that's the plan, although lately I kind of worry that only having Molotovs to start could fail to provide a sufficient hook and deter some players, so I'm still thinking about different ways I can start the game. And you're actually welcome to play the demo in the link in the description and tell me what you think. I hope to get more into the different weapon types in the next video when things are further along and I've built out levels for those other weapons. Anyway. So we finally have the first world built in Godot, and after I did that, I needed to implement some things to make it a more playable experience. Some of the levels have water on them, and so I needed to do several things surrounding that. I had to make sure the water impacts for bullets and throwables function correctly on the new tile map. Bullets have different impacts in water, and throwables actually will splash instead of exploding. Water also prevents zombies from catching on fire, and I was able to do that by creating an in-water bool on the zombie, which sets to true when they touch a water tile, and it has to be false for them to catch on fire. And it's also checked again before the fire death sequence is over, and that allows the zombies to be extinguished if they're on fire and then enter the water. And to make sure some zombies don't wander into the water like on this level, I added an on-off toggle to zombies' random movement to keep them still so that I can stage things like this. So right here, the player has to be extra precise to hit them with a the Molotov, otherwise they'll splash into the water and do no damage. So that was it for Water and Fire. I also needed to complete more animations for the pilot, both for before and after the gun is collected in the first refueling platformer level. As soon as he collects the gun, 
the animations are swapped to then show the pilot with the gun in all the animations. After all of that, I did a few pieces of polish. My favorite thing I added was a different fire death sequence for the zombies. So previously, once the fire would finally kill them, they would just fall over and fade out. But then I thought it would be a lot cooler if at the end of the sequence they'd turn into a pile of ash instead. I really like how that turned out. I also added a campfire animation to give it some movement, which I plan to also later do for the flames that the Molotovs create. I wanted to make the plane look a little bit less like a boring moving shape, so I did this propeller animation. Also a subtle airstream effect behind the plane, which I did with a particle generator. So the plane is a bit better now, but I still want to give it even more subtle movement eventually, maybe with the wings tilting side to side slightly or something. Then I have enough darker nighttime levels, so I added a quick moon that glows a little bit. I'll probably add some other phases as well later on. And lastly, the grass needed some more variation, so I added some different lengths, including some cattails as well, which break up the monotony of the repeating grass pattern. Just adding these few varying tiles make the maps look so much better. So that should about get everyone up to speed on game progress. Finally, before I sign off earlier, I mentioned the game maybe finally having a name. I came up with a couple that I don't think would encroach on anything out there that already exists. I wanted the name to be short and clean, yet give some intuitive clues about what the game is. The first one I thought of was Undead Drop, which I like, but it's maybe too close to Dead Drop, which is already taken. But my favorite is probably Zom Drop. Just two syllables, pretty clean, implies zombies and dropping things on them. Also, in my opinion, it totally just sounds like an arcade game name. So I'll probably continue to think about it a little bit more before really committing to it. But in the meantime, if anyone has any other suggestions, I'm definitely interested in hearing them. All right, that'll be it for this one. In the next month's video, I plan to have many more levels, more weapons, and the Godot version of the game will be free to play test. So if you're interested in checking it out, Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.